Hello there, and welcome to this video on helping you to master timing. Not rhythm, not time signatures, not tempo, but just timing. And I say that because it doesn't matter what the rhythm is, it doesn't matter what the tempo is, it doesn't matter what the time signature is. Uh, if you don't have the internal metronome steady, I call it steadiness in execution, then it doesn't matter what those other three things are, they won't come out very well. Now, I have created uh, a little image, which is the best I can do to help you master uh, timing if you don't have a very good sense of timing. And that simply means that when you're playing something, if somebody's listening, they won't really be able to feel where beat one is. They don't really know where you are in terms of the timing of the piece, what bar you're on. Common problem, easily fixed with a bit of practice. Uh, so I will uh, dive straight into it. As always, I like to comment subscriptions are welcome and have a look at my books, blog, Patreon, podcasts, and new playlists. Lots of uh, goodies in the description box below as well. Now this, which you cannot see so clearly, I have taken a photo and placed it on the screen. And uh, I'll keep it up there for a little bit. The P, first of all, represents pop music. And I'm only saying that because pop music is generally, I'd say 99, if not 100%, uh, it, it's not swing. In other words, it's not jazz, it doesn't uh, swing. So the off beat, which is not the one, two, three, four, but the and between them is normally emphasized. Whereas in jazz, the emphasis is normally on the beat just before the two and just before the four. But in jazz, it's called emphasizing beat two and four, which is kind of done by emphasizing just before it in beat one and three. So this is the best I can come up with as an image. And I'd like you to have this image in your mind to practice with until you get to the point where, even just like with the major scales, you eventually throw it away because you don't need it anymore. So these are just the stabilizers to get you going. And I'm gonna give you some step-by-step -step technical exercises or rhythmic technical exercises, timing technical exercises, so that you can uh, start playing better in time and being a lot more consciously aware in the beginning of all of this. And I've got one analogy before I give you the exercise. Imagine a skydiver who is falling to the earth from about 10,000 feet. I understand that the parachute slows down at the end, slows the fall down, but generally speaking, if the, the skydiver didn't have an altimeter on his wrist, he would have to kind of feel, if he's very experienced, he'd, he would have a feeling, and that's how it is here. You have a feeling of where you are in your fall. So he, let's just say it takes a minute to fall 2,500 feet. So four minutes to fall 10,000 feet. That may be completely ridiculous, but it's just an analogy. The idea is that just like when you're playing, there's a feeling that you know where you are in the bar, in, in the measure, it, as the music is passing. So this skydiver knows about a minute has passed, and he's at about 7,500 feet. And then he'll feel that another minute has passed and he's at about 5,000 feet. Another minute, 2,500. And then, generally speaking, another minute to the ground. He'll have that feeling of being at about that altitude, about that altitude. And it's the same thing. When you go past needing this, and you've done these exercises for a couple of weeks, perhaps, or even a couple of days, it might come too quickly, you'll, you'll know what it, what it means when I say it's just a feeling. Many people who have naturally got uh, a good sense of timing, good sense of rhythm as it's called, even though it doesn't matter what the rhythm is, they kind of have this, but maybe they can't explain it. Uh, whereas I like to teach things and explain things, so I'm very philosophical about things. Hopefully it will help you. So when I'm listening to jazz or playing something, there's a feeling inside, and it's basically this. I just know where I am in each bar. And these kind of, like, off of the off beats, these bits which are between the X and the end of the bar, there's a kind of consciousness, a kind of feeling inside that, that you just know where you are in that bar. And when you're listening to jazz and you're listening to that swing going on, you know where they are. You can follow it because they're portraying it very well. It's interesting to think that rhythm and timing just comes out of the air. If, if I just do this, you don't know what time signature that is what beat I'm highlighting, whether it's an on beat or an off beat or a down beat or an up beat, whatever you want to call it. You don't know that. You don't know if I'm playing the swing beats. You don't know if I'm going and two, three, and four. You know, one, and two, three, and four. You don't know what I'm doing. You don't know if I'm just doing beat one of uh, each beat 
in a three four you don't know if i'm going one two three one two you don't know if somebody if you just walk in you have no idea what i'm doing when i'm doing this you don't know what i'm feeling so the feeling of rhythm and timing comes from within and that's why i want you to start from within because it's irrelevant what you're playing on the piano if you can't feel it inside so let me give you this nice uh, technical well theoretical you know, rhythmic timing exercise, I don't, I don't know what to call it. So the idea is, because it's all within, doesn't really exist, I can't give you and you can't give me a bar of music, doesn't exist, a, a bar of gold would be uh, most appreciated, but you can't give a gold, uh, you can't give a piece of, a bar of music. So you've got to feel it inside. And the idea is that you start on beat one in your mind and you take your own tempo, keep it 4-4 four, four for now, but this applies to any other time signature, keep it 4-4 four, four for now. And you want to just set up your internal metronome so one, I can feel it, click, click. Let's just say two beats per second. No, sorry, uh, two, 120 beats per minute. And uh, so two beats per second, yes. Click, 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 click. But your choice. And you want to feel, first of all, before touching anything, beat one. So I'm just going to go now. I'll, I'll use my, my finger to illustrate what's in my mind. So I'm just feeling, because it doesn't exist. It's just a feeling, one. One. So that one feeling is just existing in my body. So I'll do it without moving and I'll go now. So one. One. And this is that kind of skydiving free fall kind of feeling. I just know where one, I know, I know where the two, three, four are. So one. One. And I'm not moving. One. One, you see? So first, the first thing is to get used to feeling the one. And I like to call that the reset feeling. You're resetting back to one. You're getting to the end of this little mini free fall and going back again. One. One. You see what I mean? One. But of course, the bars are passing in front of you like this rather than going back all the time. So that's the first test. Then I want you to emphasize beat two in your mind before the piano. We'll get to that in a moment. So, 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 so we'll start with one. So one, but I'm emphasizing beat two. I'll just, I'll just highlight where it begins. See if you can follow along. So one, two, 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 two. So if you do that, what you're doing, if you do it every day for a few minutes, more than one time a day, I would say, you'll start to experience what it feels like to have a really good sense of rhythm as it's called this internal metronome is always steady and you'll start to become conscious of being able to move around this table of rhythm of of metronomic steadiness let's call it and that's the starting point to being able to play very well in time instead of no one knowing where beat one is so let's just try it on beat three so we'll start now three 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 so i'm emphasizing and then we do it on four so just starting one four 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 so you're emphasizing these beats which are in the air they don't physically exist so if you do that for a few times you don't have to be at the piano you can be walking around laying in bed sitting in traffic anywhere in the kitchen try this and really become very familiar with it. When you've done that, you want to get used to doing the offbeat. We'll get to the piano in a moment. You want to get used to doing the offbeat, the pop offbeat. So that would sound like one, when you have this one, two, three, four. I'll do, I'll do every one. It's just very dry, you see? So this represents the X in the middle. One, and, and 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 so you want to get used to emphasizing each and whether it's the one whether it's the first and second and third and or fourth and so let me just jump forward a bit and i'll do the third and so it begins now so one and 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 you see what i mean it's just coming out of the air but it's not really because this is kind of inside in my body somewhere in my stomach in my chest i don't know where it is but it's I'm adhering to it all the time. So let's just try it on, on maybe the two. So one, and, 
and 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 you're going to get used to being able to do this on all of the down beats one two three four and then all of the off beats and two and three and four so why don't you try that on the piano and you can do it in your own way so just take a chord we'll just keep it simple and just play a C no we won't we'll go to E flat my favorite key we'll go to E flat I'll play I'll play E flat minor six just to have a bit more instead of playing C major E flat minor six lovely chord and we're gonna go one you can do this with a walking bass if you want you know personalize always I'll just keep it simple for now so we'll go one two three four so this is an expression, this is the first expression of what you were practicing within. So you may not do this for a few days at the piano. You may want to spend a few days mastering it inside, because that's where it's coming from. If you can't do it inside, you can't do it at the piano. So, we're doing this. So what you're going to do is emphasize the downbeats first with the chord. So, let's emphasize all of them first. Very easy, one, two, three. Fine. Now let's only emphasize three of them. So let's emphasize only one, two, and three. Now I'll emphasize only two of them, just one and two. Now I'll just emphasize one. This is just a good practice of steadiness. One. one. Now let's pick another one. See which one I do. Now I'll do two in the bar. Can you see? If somebody walks in, they don't know what the hell's going on, but you are following where beat one is. You, you have that reset feeling, so you know what's going on. And as you notice, I don't remember what I did, but you'll probably have noticed whether I played two and three, or three and four, or one and four, or whatever combination I did. So try that. To make it a bit more interesting, remove that left hand and let that happen within. So, I'll just start with beat one, and then just see where I play. I'm playing on the, on the beat or on an off beat. Let's try an off beat now. So, one, two. See, there was a three and a half. Did you notice? I'll, maybe I'll do, uh, I'll do this to give you a hand to help you follow it, then I'll take it away. So, I'll do on beats or off beats. So that was beat four then you should have got. So that's only possible to do and feel if I feel it inside. But honestly, this kind of four box thing is what's in my mind, in my body somewhere. And I just always know where I am, as you will too. Anyone with a sense of timing and rhythm has this inside. They just know where they are. One, they know where they are. Two, they know where they are. Three, they know four. So let's try now uh, to highlight the swing the sort of swing offbeat. And normally that's on the and two, and three, and four, and one. It's just at the end of the previous bar, as you can see on the screen. So, uh, so this one, first, I mean, you can feel it inside, but let's just do it at the piano first and then practice it inside. I'll do the reverse this time, a bit of variety. We'll use, uh, what chord now? Let's use G hold diminished. So G hold diminished. And I'm gonna go one, Two. Here's my steadiness. Here's my bars. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to emphasize the, the offbeat, but the one that isn't exactly in the middle, the one that's nearer to the beginning of the next bar. And these are the swing ones. By the way, you can go into the actual theory of this in a lot more detail in terms of notes, values, and all that stuff. But I don't want to go into that too heavy because you can just look on Wikipedia for that. But this is an actual experimental thing to do. Um, I have a nice uh, teaching which is, uh, 10,000 words can describe the taste of an orange, but it is in the eating. This is the eating. But by all means, go and read the 10,000 words. So, one, two. And I'm going to go on the, ha on the and, just before the beat which is coming up. So, one, and two, three, and four. See, it gives it a swing. I'm not going, because that's straight. That's the poppy thing. I'm going, and two, three, and four. But again, it's a feeling. When you're playing jazz, you, em you, what's the word, portray the feeling. You're not actually a drummer. You're not going, you know, you're not, or even a pop drummer, kind of going, you know, 
Like you're not the drummer. You can be if you want to be, but you're not. You're supposed to be playing on top of that rhythm. So, so one and two and four and two. Now do it without the left hand and feel it. Now I'll do it without moving my hand. And four and two and four. Now let's try on the uh, two and a half and four and a half. So. Two, so let me do it with the left hand to give you the structure. One, two, and three, four, and two, and three, and so without the left hand, and three, four, and now if somebody came in, as far as they're concerned, if we forget what I just did, and I just go. They have no idea what's going on because they haven't got this to follow. They don't know what I'm doing. I could be doing anything. But we know I'm going two and three, four and, and three, four and, and bom, bom, bom. you know? They don't know that we do because it's coming from within. That's the point. So what you want to do is mix and match playing on the beats, any of them, just one, away from the piano and at the piano. And then on the straight off beat, straight f it's normally called straight fours and swing fours. So the straight four is in the middle, the pop one. And the swing is nearer the end of that bar, which is where that second circle is. I know you're going to ask about the first one. I'll do that in a second. So at the end. See, it just happens just before the next bar. Now, the one, just to quickly do it, this is a bit less common. This is more of a kind of drummery thing to do. But it's nice to sort of know that you can put your mind there. You can put your feeling there. So it's kind of going. Let me do it like so. It's going one quickly, two, three, four. It's happening just after the beat. It's one to practice. Don't worry about this one too much, but it's one to practice if you want to. So it's kind of uh, so it's like one and, two and. You don't do it all the time. I don't want to get too complicated about this. But it's just going. Let me just do it on beat one and three. So I'm doing it on one and three, but I'm doing it at the beginning, just after the bar. One, three, one, three. So it happens at the beginning of the bar. Uh, don't worry too much about that one, but that's why it's there. And you can do that on beat two and four as well. I can demonstrate, but you get the idea. So that's what you want to do. In conclusion, on the Beat one, two, three, four on the heart on the and when it's straight fours, and then on the and but the swing fours near the end. But get used to doing it away from the piano and at the piano. I think this is just quite a nice thing to do. And start to mix and match. If you just keep this steadiness, this is proving to yourself that you do have a, a, a very steady internal metronome. And that's what this is all about. So when you start playing stuff, I like to demonstrate using Fly Me To The Moon because everyone knows it, it's a very simple chord progression. That's what you're portraying. It, you, you stop doing the technical exercises eventually. You don't need to do them anymore. And you just feel this steadiness, three, four. You feel somehow, see and feel the bar, space. You know where the middle of it is exactly. And you know where the swing middle is, the one that's a bit later in the bar. And then somehow you are able to play that and portray it, but you have to have that steadiness in execution. Bom. See, it's just there. Four, one, and two, three, four, and one. See, I did it in different times there. So if, you, if you're snapping along with that, that was all coming from within. So if I didn't do that, I would have just been saying to you, inside, all I feel is one and two, three and four. Like just that is happening inside.
See, sometimes it's on the beat. And sometimes it isn't, then I let that silence go. It's, it's like the free falling. In, in Fly Me to the Moon, that's quite a good moment, actually, where you are free falling because nothing's happening. And you have to feel one, two, three, four, in silence within. So I hope all of that will be of use to you, as always. Likes, comments, subscriptions, always welcome. Have a look at my books, plug Patreon, podcast, new playlists, and I will see you in the next video. All the best, and bye for now.